please welcome good friend of the M's. It's Gary Gary Beers. Yeah, yes. we've got the big fella in studio. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you going? Mate, we are very well. <laughs> we hear that yesterday you and the band were given an award for over four billion with a B global streams. Congratulations. That must make you feel so, so happy. It's amazing. I I, I don't know how really to fathom. Four billion streams. I mean, what's next? Ten zillion thoughts. I mean, it's it's yeah. one of those things that you never really think about. But it's it's amazing. It's it's wonderful that we're we're still out there, still relevant, and still part of people's lives. And I love the fact that adults love it. Now their kids are loving it as well. Exactly. That must make you feel. Well, good. Well, we probably say grandkids. And it's, it's <laughs> like, uh, I mean, someone was saying we're a bit, uh, the greatest hits has been in the charts for eleven years. I'm thinking, wow, what's happened in eleven years? Yeah. Sure has. <laughs> Gary, what have you been working on lately? I mean, you're living in LA. Tell us about what you're up to. Yeah, I've been living there for I think 18, 19 years. I've I've married to a lovely American lady named Jordan, and I have. Uh, Almost just turned twelve year old twins. So, Wonderful. Uh, but I've I've been got my own uh, own band over there called Ash and Moon uh, with a fellow Aussie called Tony, Toby Rand. He's from Melbourne and was in a band called Duke Cartel. So we got that going. And um, I started. I've been tinkering with yeah woodwork electronics all my life. But I, I started my um, to build my own bass guitars. Amazing. And I've got the patent for the electronics. Um, and I've just started the company. I, I was doing it for myself, but everyone's saying release them. So now I'm I'm releasing them. Well, you played uh, some unbelievable stadiums all over the world, but uh, a place that's close to my heart is Wembley. Oh. Like 70,000 people, Wembley Stadium. What was that like? You know, it's, it's funny you mention that, Wendell, because it's, it's like everyone goes, oh, you know, Wembley, where all the music happened. And it's like, I remember, you know, all the, the, the kangaroos playing there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, because I used to, yeah, we're, I'm a footy tragic, you know, sadly for Manly. Let's go come on Manly next oh, year. Next year, right. next year. You'll be right. Fan, kid. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, but Wembley, Wembley was just ridiculous. I mean, the old Wembley. Yes, yeah, you know, the that's one, right. the one where you can you, you can see every face. Yeah, right? and and to play there as an Aussie band, I, I'm not even sure if any other Aussie band sold it out, but just to play there oh. um, and sell it out and just basically just walk those hallowed stage and and you know to our our late dear departed manager's credit, he he, you know, he didn't tell us we were walking on stage and said, Oh, by the way, we spent all the gate on the on filming it. So Oh well. So due to his vision we have a we have film of the concert. Yeah, well that's the thing. We love that vision. We've seen that vision before. Do you watch it back sometimes? You know, it, it's funny we, we, Australia's got that whole tall poppy syndrome thing. So you know and in excess copped it I'd say really more than anybody. So we uh we didn't watch the footage for quite a while, but when we when we saw it because you know we're too busy doing the gig and, yeah but you knew it was special but when you see the footage back and you see the whole crowd going up and down you think yeah that was a really amazing moment but yeah i've seen it quite a few times since then i mean yeah you know as time passes you it's you learn to embrace embrace your past more so mm. and that's a big part of it so yeah we're, we're very very proud of that moment now in, in our lives there's been tv dramas there's been uh the mystify uh you know sort of documentaries and the like you get to see the the chemistry between all the band i mean what was it like on tour at that? You know those huge moments and backstage. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it sounds like um, a fairy tale, but we're all best mates. I mean, there's yeah. three brothers, and we all went to school, and uh, you know we all looked after each other, and we're all, you know, at, and we grew up on that, you know, the sporting ethic. Yeah. You know, like we grew up where we take no prisoners. We you know we bond together like a team, and we went out there to basically blow everyone off off stage, um, steal their crowd like Adam Ant and all those poor <laughs> unfortunate people that we, we supported yeah. for, for tours. Um, but yeah, that was our thing. We looked after each other. We, we, we were a traveling family. So, um, that's, that's what got us through it. What about GGB bases? Tell us all <laughs> about that. You said you got the, the patent, you've been making them for yourself, but now they're out there for other people. I want to say before you answer that question that we have an awesome giveaway that starts on Monday. Be listening to the rush hour to find out how you can win a signed base from Gary, Gary awesome. Beer. So that is happening as of Monday. So make sure you're listening at four o'clock. Please tell us about the bases. Yeah. Well, the one I'm signing is going to be one of my, uh, in excess stage bases. It's one of my, 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 the ones I used to play on tour. Uh, I used it's the one I used on the last tour with Michael, so it'll be signed and sealed and delivered. Um, but the new ones, I've, I've, I just had the idea for the pickup, which is electronics, the part that transfers the sound from the strings to your amplifier. I've been working on it for 25, 30 years. I started in Australia, I moved over to America and I finally found a, a what it's called a string winder, which builds the pickup. Um, and a pickup simple, it's a, a magnet with wires, but somehow I, 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 discovered something that no one's done before and I got the patent and I own the patent and wow. so I'm building these things now and I, I built 14 prototypes picked all the colors the shapes and the, and and um, now I've, I've found a company that hand makes them for me down near where I live in, in in Orange County but they're all 
bass feel and sound wise on my old 58 P bass, which is the NXS bass, which I bought in Chicago in 85. So wow. yeah. That's yeah. absolutely awesome. I, I know, like, you know, you talked about being brothers and in a team. Like, when I look back and I just, I got to meet a lot of people, like Michael Hutchins for me. Like, I, I look at the way that, you know, he's just, he's aura just when he's on stage and then obviously the cameras and then, and, and not just because of the girls, but like, he just, all the good sorts are around him too. But he just, he just had it, didn't he? He did. He did. He, and the thing is, it's he, like, he had it just naturally. I mean, he never, it was never fake, it was never turned on. And, 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 the guy that I grew up with, you know, who was started singing in my band with Andrew and myself was, you know, the guy with the, the stringy, dirty hair and the, and the bad complexion. And he was not the greatest singer, but he developed into, you know, Michael, like, yeah. he, like, you know, one of the greatest of all time. But, you know, it's, it's just, it was just funny you mentioned the, the team thing, because we used to always love the fact that, you know, Australian teams would gravitate towards us on tour because you yeah. would tour in the summer or the winter, you know, and then the cricket teams or the footy yeah. teams and, you know, I got, you know, being invited to one of the, I think the third, the third test where, um, where we beat the Poms and I, uh, I went in there and sat on the trophy by accident. And, <laughs> yeah, it was just, just, yeah, it was in Leeds, I think it was, but yeah. just, just magic moments that's in our history is also that. And, you know, like Warney would just turn up of at course. our hotel, break curfew to come and have a beer with us. It was, <laughs> yeah, the War oh, Brothers Warney. and just all that stuff is a really big part of our history too. Gary, what's been uh, the reason in your eyes that the music's been so enduring in some of the, those songs that you've written? It's just good. I mean, it, it's it, you know, no offense to other bands, but I mean, we've got Andrew and Michael were, were you know, world-class writers and the rest of us, you know, sort of took a back seat until we got a Guernsey with certain songs that, that we, we worked to, to write, but it's the songs. It really yeah. comes down to the songs. I mean, we get, you know, gigs are gigs, are gigs and, and, you know, films of Wembley are, are great, but really if it was just crap songs, it wouldn't be known. And, and yeah, you know, we, and our songs still sound fresh and good today as they did when they released them. Oh, so yeah. that's always a plus. Did I sort of pick up something in, in one of your earlier answers around going to the States because the States was more about what you wanted, like no tall poppy, you know, that type of stuff compared to perhaps what you got, got hammered with it in excess. Mm. Is that why you decided to go there and, and, and bring up a young family there too? Well, I, it, it, it's just, you know, luck of the draw that I, I met my, my beautiful you know, wife now that, um, I was there doing the, the rock star show and I, oh. met, I met her in a bar. She walked up to me. So lucky me. So yeah. Um, yeah and that's, so yeah, I stayed there and raised, you know, raising a family there, but uh, the, the band traveling to America was, was purely, um, you know, Chris Murphy's vision because we, you know, every Australian band went to England because of the whole, you know, the old dart and the, 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 yeah. that connection. And, and I understand it. We, I love the Beatles and Queen and all that sort of stuff, but, and Zeppelin, they're my favorite bands, but we all grew up playing and jamming on American R&B and, mm. and bands like Little Feet, like more, le lesser known bands. And John and I, especially as a rhythm section, we, we really cut our teeth on, on, on funk grooves and the rocks. And then punk came along and we just added heavy guitar to it. So, mm. you know, Tim used to play percussion in the, in the Farris brothers. And then all of a sudden he's a, he's a rock star on guitar. So, yeah, we just evolved in America, you know, just seemed like a, 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 a smart place to go because mm. it was really opening up to Australian, Australian acts. And we got there at the beginning. Good, uh, good decision. I, yeah. I, I reckon, <laughs> it was, I reckon yes. the song that you wrote was, was about me, Devil Inside. <laughs> it's a great song. I love that song. <laughs> Are there some you look back yeah. on and go, I can't believe that was such a hit. Like you banged it out in, yeah. in a short amount of time. Or is there one that you sit back and go, God, that you had to craft and craft to get it the way that it became? Well, there's a lot of songs that came out that are on record exactly as Andrew wrote it. And a lot of it is probably from Andrew's original demo because he, he captured a magic that there's no point re trying to recreate. And then we play around it like, like Need You Tonight. But oh, so yeah. songs like Kick or, you know, that's, that's their, this, there's a general idea and the band just keeps bashing it out. You know, so like, good. And like Don't Change, another one. And, and Devil Inside was funny because it's, it's, it, it went to number two in America and it was almost went to number one. It would have been the first song in history to, to have devil in it in America because wow. you know, yeah, wow. you know how America is about yes. that. <laughs> but it just, it stalled at number two, but yeah. we only released it because we hadn't done a video for Need You Tonight at that time. So we released it and it went number two. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. 
Oh, look, it's such an absolute thrill to have you in. You literally are rock royalty. We're so lucky. And again, we have the awesome giveaway that starts on Monday. Be listening to the Rush Hour from 4 p.m. to find out how you can win that signed bass from Gary, Gary Beers. Gary, thank you so much. Thanks, gentlemen. Magnificent, Gary. It really is a pleasure having you. And best of luck uh, over there with those 12-year-olds, mate. They, uh, mm. They'll keep you young. <laughs> they do. They do. They're, they're both already taller than me, so it's, it's, it's a good start. Oh, yeah. There you but, go. Uh, yeah, may I say, go manly. Yeah, yeah good luck. <laughs> next, yeah. next year, well, Wendell's best friend is the coach there, and you've got yeah, the so Turbo. Well, if Turbo go. can stay fit, mate, yeah. that's, Turbo needs to stay fit, yeah. and then you'll be right. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's I, a big I, if. And I think, I think, <laughs> Brooke, I think Brooks is going there is going to be a big, a big plus. Yeah. I'm really, really confident. That's good on you. Quite well, you get to watch the games from um, yeah, I, I, LA? I've got yeah, I got a, I got stream, that? I stream them. Yeah, yeah. I, I still haven't gotten into any American sports yet. I mean, my son yeah. plays baseball and he played flag football, which I never let him play because it's yeah, if you want brain damage, play American football, but. Um, yeah, he, he hit a home run in, in his championship game, which they won this wow. year. First time he's ever played. That'll do. Yeah. So yeah, so he's he's a he's a he's a, he's a septic now. <laughs> Good on you. Thanks again. Uh, awesome. Thanks, guys.